Great. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and thanks to our witnesses for coming here today. Um, can I start, Shun, by just saying that you did indicate early on that the second Grant Thornton review should be completed within four weeks. Will you give the commitment that you will come back before this committee when that review has been completed uh, and to also answer questions at this stage? Great. Thank you. Um, it, it, it seems very clear, and just following on from the last set of questions, uh, that, that Noel Kelly seemingly is able to almost dictate contracts uh, to RTE and they're simply accepted. I mean, I find it uh, unbelievable, the idea that you're, you're operating off, you know, partially verbal contracts. Um, can I ask, Adrian, how many people in RTE are represented by Noel Kelly? I, I would need to... Approximately. Or, or if, if Geraldine O'Leary or if one of your colleagues knows. It could be four or five. Um, Oh, okay. I, I, I do find it surprising the executive board don't yeah. know how many people are represented. Yeah. Okay. Who is in the room with Noel Kelly when these contracts are negotiated? Who was in the room when Noel Kelly negotiated Ryan Tuberty's contract? So, uh, in the room, so, uh, as I said earlier, the process is led by the CFO. So, the CFO, the CFO was in the room with Noel Kelly? Correct. Was there anybody else in the room at the time? Uh, also support from legal. Okay, so CFO, so the head of legal would have been aware of, of, of um, the contract? Yeah, but not, it's not the head of legal. It, it's somebody who reports into the head of legal would also have been present. Oh, okay, so we're, we're negotiating the contract for the biggest star in RTE, uh, and the agent for that person is in the room, uh, and so the CFO at the time was there, uh, and somebody from the legal department was there. So there was a whole set of meetings, uh, so some were attended by the DG with the CFO and legal. Um, so, so at the very least, the DG's office, yeah. the CFO's office, and the legal office within RT would, would have known in, in all of these circumstances. Okay. Um, the, the executive board then, you would have had a copy of Ryan Tuberty's contract. How many of you would have been aware? Would you have been aware of Ryan Tuberty's contract? So I wouldn't have had any input into the contract. So, so, so was, even, even though, Adrian, yeah. you were the one who was charged with ensuring how many hours Ryan Tuberty was on air, uh, you had to have complete knowledge of all of that. You didn't know what was in Ryan Tuberty's contract. So what I would have received is not the actual contract or being involved in the drafting process, but I would have received um, some points around... Uh, the number of hours required. Okay, but well, you didn't know the full, you just knew that, that aspect, what he was expected to do for his contract, not if you like the, what, what RT was going to pay Ryan Tobin. Oh no, I, I did know that. So I got, so I was copied in uh, early January in a mail. Uh, so the reason I was copied on it is to do with the TV hours, okay. but it had the bullet points. And as I said earlier, that's why I could see that Noel but, Kelly was But you weren't, when, when did you become aware of, uh, you know, Stephanie Brady asked, the, the, the verbal agreement? So I became aware of the verbal agreement. What day is today? It is... Um, but but in, 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 in recent... Literally in, this, literally okay, in, in this week at like 3 a.m. on okay. Monday, I became aware because I went to look for uh, the contract uh, that would, would, the written agreement basically underwriting this. Okay. And I didn't find one. And uh, then I discovered, discovered in fact, the, the detail. that a verbal agreement had been given uh, on this team's call on May the 11th, on May the 7th, excuse me. Okay. So that was information I, I have maybe for three days now that this is, because I couldn't understand why I couldn't find it in the correspondence. I was looking for it and I was going, where is the agreement in relation to the 75,000? Uh, okay. And then I found out, actually, and this was given verbally. And was, it, was that there was a note was attached to the file or <laughs> did the DG inform you of this? Or? No, there's, a, there's just a record of the team's call. Okay, a record yeah. of the team's call. Yeah. Um, Mr. Collins, I appreciate you only joined RT in, in, in 2020, so you wouldn't have been in the room when the negotiation um, no. happened. Um, did your predecessor as CFO inform you as to the nature of the deal that was entered into? No, I didn't discuss it with yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do, do you think it would be unusual practice that, you know, you're taking over somebody in a yeah. job that... Sorry, was... let me clarify that because there's two elements to this contract, okay, there's the, the standard part of the contract, like all the talent have, and then there was this second part to it, the, the commercial element or the tripartite uh, element, 
So the standard part was handed over to me to conclude. The, the commercial part, I wasn't involved in. So you had no awareness of the, of the commercial elements? I was aware that RT were trying to put or broker a deal for Mr. Tuberty that he would give him an opportunity to earn, um, increase his earnings with uh, the sponsor and that, but that's as far as okay. my involvement was. I, I, I understand that from the RT statement it was made clear that, that Jim Jennings, one of your colleagues on the executive board, that he was aware of the agreement with Renault. Did he discuss this with any others on the board? Did he discuss, and I'll, I'll ask each of you, so Adrian, Geraldine, Richard, Rory. So, uh, yeah. so from what I can see in terms of looking at all the emails, I, I can see that he received the contract, that's why I put it down here, uh, but I haven't been able to clarify in terms of, I don't think he had any input, and from the mails I saw, there was a mail back to do with this is a commercial agreement, because Jim, of course, is editorial. I, I, I know that, but, but according to your statement, he was clearly aware of this. So what I'm, I'm kind of wondering, he knew that there was a deal with Renault. Yeah. Did it come up you know, at an executive board meeting at any stage where he said to any of you, folks, there is this deal with Ryan Tuberty with Renault? So uh, not at the executive board. Again, this deal was being negotiated between, I think it was December and May from the dates that I could see. So all through that timeline, there's a whole set of... Uh, mails about it because if you look at it there are three pieces to this there is his substantive contract right and yeah, that's on the file then there is what's now known as the tripartite agreement that tripartite agreement was only ever going to be activated in my understanding from what i saw uh, in january if there was a sponsor okay. so so that's why when I went looking for this question around the guarantee, I went looking for the paperwork to see, well, surely this is underwritten. Okay, okay. Yeah. Can I say, I have a number of other questions. Yeah. Um, so to, to Geraldine O'Leary, you said you knew that the, the Astis or, or this barter account invoices, that they were for Ryan Tuberty. Yes. But why was it a case that, that Orty didn't require any names to be put on, 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 on these invoices? Well, again, uh, to repeat, it was my first time um, having anything to do with um, a talent contract, and I was just aware of confidentiality. I was just aware that, um, you know, you don't, you, um, I, I pieces of paper around the office. I was just aware of confidentiality. So uh, it was very clear in the conversations with um, the Director General, Noel Kelly, and I that these were for Ryan Tuberty. So, so, so the DJ, Noel Kelly, came in, and so w w what was the name that was put on... on on these invoices? They, they, were, they were invoiced to Noel Kelly's company. Okay, so, but there was no reference, obviously, to Ryan Tuberty, okay, on, on, on this. Um, Adrian, it comes back in, in yeah. response to um, my, my colleague, Jeffrey O'Sullivan. Um, you, you referenced, you said that this, uh, you, you became aware this was a commercial agreement with risk um, because of yeah. the, the nature of what's involved. Do you maintain a risk register um, within RTE? So by that I was talking about uh, in reference to the, uh, to the legal advice because naturally in any negotiation there's a whole set of things that fall in and out as I understand it. Again, I wasn't involved in this negotiation but things fall in and out. So if you make a commercial decision and the commercial decision was to guarantee payments to Ryan Tuberty, uh, that is a risk. Oh, oh, okay, but it would... There is a risk register, yes. There is a, there yes. Is a risk register. Okay, I, I'm going to just... So if I can come to, to Anne O'Leary, and I appreciate in terms of the work, the Audit and Risk Committee, because in many ways, it was you bringing it to, yes. uh, to your attention. When, when you became aware in terms of all of this, did, did you have a discussion with Dee Forbes? Um, I did. I just told her that this had come up and that I was going to run it through the Audit and Risk Committee and that I was going to appoint um, Brant Thornton and Arthur Cox. And she said, you know, follow whatever process you need to there. She didn't in any way make any comment. And Shun did attend all of the meetings then following on from that as well. So I made sure that uh, it was well covered. Oh, okay. I, I've got to appreciate, and I, I want to put both to yourself, Anne, and to Shun. Both of you have, have very distinguished records in business. You have a lot of, you know, accountancy and auditing experience. You know what, you know, what has been going on. Uh, and you're hearing all of this, and you're coming to this for the first time. Um, how can you have confidence in an executive board when you became aware of what are clear lapses um, of good corporate governance, where we're even hearing today 
around you know, contracts with Ortiz top star, with bits of verbal agreements put on when other members of the executive uh, board don't, don't seem to know um, what's going on. Um, do you have confidence in the executive board? Uh, uh, Anne? I, the answer is yes, I do. I think since uh, I, I started here, the amount of change we managed to do by improving internal audits, improving procedures, improving procurement, uh, this came as a huge shock. The, even managing to do things like the um, business continuity planning, which they didn't have very much of at the time they started. So I feel that the Audit and Risk um, Committee have made huge positive changes, and this came as a big surprise. But. I'm, I, I think it's our challenge now to make sure we put the procedures in place to make sure that that can never happen again. Okay, Shun, because you, you spoke, and I entirely agree with you, this is around a question around culture. And I know when you became before our committee before, you, you, you talked about that, and we entirely agree with this. This is around the culture. And the problem is the perception that we have now is that there is a culture uh, of secrecy, there is a culture of people operating in silos, uh, clearly, in terms of the contractual arrangements that are entered into, you know, they're, 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 it's not normal HR or, 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 or legal. So, you know, can I ask, how can you have confidence in the culture that seems to exist now at senior levels? I think what I'm explaining here is I actually don't have confidence in the culture. Uh, it's, it's, and that's the environment that the executive board is operating within. Um, as professionals, you know, that's a different matter, but I, I do have confidence in the people there. And I think I know from, because remember, we didn't know about this until uh, the, the 19th of, of June or the 16th. Uh, mm -hmm. the, yeah, the Friday. The recent weeks, um, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's uh, like, it, it is shocking. Mm -hmm. This is just a complete lapse of governance you know it is a complete lapse it's it, and the more the more we are looking into it the, the more we realize and i think in fairness to the executive board here the more they realize how obvious the shortcomings that the culture has instilled in the organization okay i have i have three quick final questions um which is about yes, res sorry, restoring yes. 30 seconds Okay, left. well, I, 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 I'm a regular tenor, and I do want to get to, to, to these because I think it is important as to where RT goes forward because I do share the importance of good public sector broadcasting, and RT needs to come out of this being transparent and accountable. One, and it follows on from Senator Warfield's question around, you know, possible other contractual relationships outside of RT in the same way as we as politicians. Do you believe that a register of interests should be established for the top talent in RT? Secondly, will you publish the arrangement that has been entered into with Patrick Keelty concerning the Late Late Show from this, for, for, for this autumn? I think that's essential uh, to restore public confidence. Uh, and finally, and I think this is a crucial question, as my colleague Senator Castles has mentioned, um, this is a small media market. Uh, and in a straightened times, do you believe that anybody in RTE should be paid more than the Taoiseach? Um, I, I, you know, I said it earlier that my opinion is that RTE is bidding against itself in a market and creating, uh, you know, and that's part of the culture as well, that maybe that applied at some point in time, but that's not the way the market is working. I think we all know that. And therefore, that in itself, the market will decide, but RT has to act in relation to that and identify the influence that they have in the marketplace in that sense. And, uh, and, and so that in itself will determine the level in the market. And, and very specifically, and I think Adrian might be the best one to, the register of interests and the Patrick Healty uh, arrangement, because I think it's in his best interests as well. Um, but if, yeah. if there's going to be confidence in the late, late brand. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's two parts to that, two two parties to that contract, uh, Senator. In terms of the register of interests, that's definitely something we'll put down for consideration. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Uh, if if Patrick Keelty is not opposed, or T are happy to publish the entire arrangement uh, around the late late show. Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Senator.